Amen. Good evening. It's good to see everybody on this blessed Wednesday evening. Let's grab our red songbook and go to number 40. Number 40, as we stand, please, I'm standing on the solid rock. We'll sing the first and last verse of number 40. Number 40. Anybody have a blessing they want to share? Amen. God's been good to you. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Number 40. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages, rage, but not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. Now I'm pressing onward, each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation, so on this solid rock I'll stay. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages. Rage, but not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. Amen, amen. What a joy it is to have a solid rock to stand on. Amen. Amen. I remember singing this in the quartet in college. So I'm, I'm hearing the, the, the bass part. Uh, that's what I sang so back then. Amen. Good song. Good truth. Amen. Everybody doing all right? Everybody still saved, right? Brother Bowen used to say, I'm so saved, it's pathetic. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You had to know him. You had to know him. He's, he's a uh, very special person. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody this evening. Hopefully, you've had a great a few days since we last, last we met or we saw each other. But, uh, Let's, uh, let's bow for prayer, and uh, we'll continue. Brother Ames, would you mind opening up a prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated. Go to number 43. 43. Where could I go but to the Lord? We'll sing all three verses. Where could I go? Where could I go? Where could I go but to the Lord? On the, number 43. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs better from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand, the friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. 
Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen, amen. Amen. Where could we go? Amen. Amen. Let's go uh, to our uh, prayer time. A um, couple announcements right quick before our prayer time. Um, Easter's coming up, and uh, that is on April 10th. 9th is April is uh, Easter, and um, we are going to be filling up the platform area with flowers, as we have done uh, in the past, in memory of a loved one. There's a sign-up sheet on the four-year bulletin board. And uh, if you would like to order one, if you could, just put, put your name down and which, what kind of flower you would like. And then the payment needs to be uh, brought in uh, by April 3rd. It's $13 uh, per, uh, per flower that you would like. So it's $13, and we need that by April 3rd. And we will have those here on Easter Sunday and make the, the house of God look really beautiful. It always is uh, so lovely seeing all these wonderful flowers. But then after the Easter morning service, uh, you can feel free to take them home and enjoy them at your house. So that's coming up. Also, we are planning to have our spring program beginning on Easter, uh, Easter Sunday. So um, in the past, we um, the, the announcement says that on April 9th, we're planning to have a candy hunt for the kids. If you'd like to help with that, with donations of small wrapped candy, if you could, leave, if you want to participate, you can leave them at the at downstairs by the church office, and that would be a big blessing. So that'll be the first of our four weeks of, of our spring program, and then we'll have uh, the, on the 10th and then the 17th. Correct? No, the, no, the 9th, the 16th, the 25th, 3rd, 23rd, I'm sorry, and then the 30th, April 30th. April 30th, we're planning on having our friend day, and I've been trying to nail down a, a, um, the Providence Baptist College tour group to come and sing for us on April uh, 20, is it 29th, 30th, 30th, the last Sunday of the month. And I don't have my calendar in front of me, sorry. But um, so that's, that's uh, our plans as of, as of right now is April 30th. So uh, just if you could just be letting people know that we're planning on having a friend day. It'll be a back-to-back -back service like we've done the last uh, couple years. I think that's a real fun, fun thing to do on those, on those uh, Sundays and uh, enjoy some time together as a church family, have a meal together. Um, and then be able to go home early uh, for the day and just enjoy the evening, um, relaxing and getting ready for the week. So that's that's uh, the the plans coming in April. Um, don't forget that this Sunday night will be uh, Lord's Supper, and we'll observe that up here upstairs. So if you could keep that in mind. Also, Mrs. Daniel would like to meet with the ladies to plan another ladies' craft fellowship following this Sunday's evening. The following. She would like to meet after this Sunday evening service to plan another ladies' craft fellowship. Okay, so uh, it's not the, the craft fellowship is not following this Sunday evening service. She wants to meet with you then. So okay, all right. Nothing like a dangling modifier, right? Amen. <laughs> For the English nerds in the room, amen. But uh, okay, so I think that's all the all of the announcements that we need to make. All right, so um, again, if you would like to help with the Easter Sunday um, candy hunt for the kids, that will be on April 9th. If you would like to help, just bring some candy and put it downstairs in the basket, and we will uh, put it in its designated place. Any candy that is not used will go towards uh, Pastor's Candy Jar. All right, so it will go to the kids eventually, and maybe a little bit to you, and maybe to me, and we'll all get to share it, so... But hopefully it'll all go to the to the Easter candy hunt. Amen. Amen. All right, let's grab our pen and paper and let's jot down these um, prayer requests right quick. If you could put 
this uh, prayer request down. It's uh, Kristen Rose. Kristen Rose. She is the wife of the Napoleon Cafe owner, and uh, she's in the hospital with COPD. The ladies just went there for their ladies' uh, luncheon this past week. Um, so that's the wife of the Napoleon Cafe owner, Kristen Rose. Kristen Rose is her name. Also be in prayer for David England. That's Brother Brian's brother. He fell and broke his arm. Bless his heart. And uh, this is affecting his Parkinson's. So we're praying for quick healing, no bad spasms. Also pray for Jean, his mom, um, as she's trying to help him. She always just stays, stays so cheerful about all of this. So that's uh, Brother uh, David England. So be in prayer for him. Also be in prayer for Miss uh, Ramsey's grandma, Edna. Edna Wood, she's home, but she's weak. Is that still the latest that we know? Uh. Okay. Wow. All right. All right. Continue being in prayer for Brother Jim Craft. That, uh, um, his fall in um, November has caused him to um, not be able to move around as much as well. And uh, it just has, has its effect on our senior saints. So be in prayer for Brother Kraft. Hun, you, there was one. Okay, um, that was Kim. Mrs. Toller's daughter had surgery today, so be in prayer for her. I, was it Kim or Allison? Kim? Okay, that's what I thought. So be in prayer for Kim and uh, recovery from surgery. And also, um, back when we were on deputation, we went to a uh, missions conference with, um, in, I believe it was uh, Beaver, Creek, Oregon, Brother Muxler's church and the Goins family, Matt Goins, him and him and Delita Goins, were missionaries going to Honduras at the time on deputation, the same time we were. And uh, I'm, I can't remember if they had their little boy, um, if he it was born then, but I do remember Matt and Delita Goins. Anyways, they've been in Honduras for 20 years now. Their son, um, their oldest son, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was actually working on the yard crew with Dalton uh, down in P Pensacola. And he was at a, a property for the college that was on Airport Road, which is near the college. And a, 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 D, a driver under the influence of foreign substance ran off the road, jumped the curb, hit him, and killed him. So that's Matt and Delita. Delita Goins, G-O-I-N-S, G-O-I-N-S, and so uh, I'll just pray for them. This is they are in Honduras, and he is in Florida, so they're probably. Uh, I would say that they would be leaving the country immediately to to come and take care of business there. But just, uh, I mean, you, you wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think that uh, your your child who's who has probably been obedient and who has listened and who has, who has uh, followed your advice and your counsel and he's, he's obeying and doing everything and then he's gone. It's like, it's, it, there's a lot of questions, a lot of questions and uh, let's pray for them. I know that, I know that um, they're very, very solid people, but I, your heart just goes out for the, the Goins family, so uh, be in prayer for them. Also be in prayer for uh, B.J. Johnston while we're talking about missionary children. B.J. Johnston and uh, his situation. He's a uh, son of our missionary over in Toronto. Amen. Anybody else have a prayer request that you'd like to mention?
any praises? So you want to praise the Lord for? Yes, ma'am. Yay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, the Enuses had a baby. The, the Their children had a baby. Their grandparents, right? Right? That's what I heard. Amen. So, got two uh, two sets of uh, new, impro- new and improved grandparents. Right? Or, amen. 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 Brother Ramsey, you and I, we're good there someday. Amen. I, I read somebody, somebody put a meme up today and, and they said, Grandpa's, uh, the, the rules for grandpa's are their dads with no rules. Amen. Spoil them and send them home. Amen. They're the, they're the reward that God gives dads for not killing the children the first time. <laughs> Uh, can I have a witness on that? Amen. 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 I'm expecting really good grandkids. That's all I've had to go through. <laughs> Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I heard. I heard that they had stopped it at the tollers and then went and saw y'all. I thought that was really that was neat to to see that. I saw a picture of uh, this uh, brother Wilkerson has started the servants conference um, in in light of the the pastor school, but calling it Sir, servants conference, and uh, it looked like it was a really exciting time over there. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Glad y'all got, got to see see them. Amen. Anybody else have a prayer request or a praise? Yes. It's spring. It's spring. Yay. Yes. Yes, Brother Ramsey. Okay. <laughs> that the Lord works it out quickly. Amen. Amen. Over the grand, yeah. Compens. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Boy. Amen. Yes. Oh my. That's right. That's right. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Well, amen. We'll definitely pray and see how God comes through, and I know He'll get the glory for whatever happens. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. Anybody else have a prayer request or a praise? All right. Then how about we do this? Um, Brother uh, Ramsey, would you pray first? And we'll just pray together.
And then, Brother Tony, would you mind taking a second? And then I'll close this in prayer. We'll just uh, pray together as a group.
Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for loving us and caring for us. I thank you so much that you, you want to hear. You want to hear our voices. You want to show yourself strong on our behalf. Oh, we love you, Heavenly Father. We praise you. We praise your holy name and praise your mighty power. We praise your word and your promises. How they give us peace in our hearts in this world that is full of turmoil and tribulation and an enemy that wants to do us harm. But Lord, you, like a, a hen over her chicks, you protect us, cover us with your wings. And we thank you for that. Well, this evening we've got some requests, Lord, some people whose hearts are, they're hurting. Lord, there are mothers grieving the loss of their little one. I pray for Ms. Delita Gowens, Lord, as she's mourning the loss of her son. And that I pray, Lord, that you please Please hug them. Hold them close. Lord, I ask that you please be with Grandma Edna, Lord, that you please touch her body. Lord, would you, would you please rejuvenate her, restore her youth, give her inner body, her organs, give them good health, give her muscle strength, Jesus, you made the lame to walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear. I know you have that power to do it again. Amen. I pray, Heavenly Father, you please touch your body and heal her in a miraculous, divine way. Once you know it's from you, reveal her mind 
to her mind, reveal to her mind your reality and help her to know how much she's loved. Or please lift her up. I pray, Lord, for Danielle and Levi as they are going through this home situation. I pray that you'd please help them to rest in your peace. Would you please implant into their minds a piece of scripture that would help comfort them and help them to know that you're, you're orchestrating this. You're going to do a miracle. I pray that you please provide their needs, provide a house for them, give them wisdom. Lord, I ask you to be, be with Brother Kraft, Lord. Touch his body, Lord. Touch his mind. Touch his muscles, his strength. Lord, we know he loves you. We know that he wants to serve you with every ounce of good health that you give him. He wants to give it back to you. That's the desire of his heart, Lord. I pray you please touch his body, heal him. Lord, please be with Kim as she's recovering from surgery. Lord, touch her body, help it to heal quickly. Be with the Johnston family, Lord, as they are helping their son, BJ, get through this infirmity, Lord. Please touch him and heal him and help him to be able to get some good answers. I pray, Lord, for Kristen Rose, Lord, as she's dealing with this COPD, Lord, please, Lord, heal her. Touch her and heal her. Lord, bless us tonight as we gather around your throne, as we also gather around your word. I pray that you'd please help us, Lord, to learn something. Thank you so much, Lord, for the church. Thank you so much for giving us your word. Please teach us. Our hearts are open. We want to hear truth. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's grab our red psalm book. Go to number 45. Number 45, we'll sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verse. Number four, five, just as I am. We'll sing four verses, the first, second, fourth, and fifth. On the first. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot of God I come, I come, just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, rich as healing of the mind, yea, all I need. God, I come, I come, just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relief, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. 
Howdy. Good to be here. That song brought back memories. It was our invitation song when I first started coming to North Sharon Community Bible Church. Every, every service. Praise the Lord. Um, I saw my rheumatologist today, and uh, the medication they've given me for my rheumatoid arthritis is working. And it's cheap, so <laughs> it's good. My uh, boss at work said, I, since I've seen my rheumatologist, she wanted a purple one with black trim. Let's see what I can do for her. <laughs> um, also, I, my crutches had some play in them. I could not, just a little bit of movement, so when I'm walking, my crutches are moving. And anyways, I went to the crutch place today and they tightened them up and it's so, it feels so much better. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, it's like, yeah. so praise the Lord for that. It just seemed like a little thing, but it's, it's more than that. Right. Tonight's letter is uh, from Don and Angie Berg, serving, in the, the, serving the Lord in Australia since 1997. Uh, it's a February letter. Dear praying friends, Praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works for the children of, to the children of men. We are thankful for his goodness to us in particular and partly demonstrated through your kindness and generosity towards us. We sent cars to say thank you, but thanks again to each of you who sent something extra for Christmas. We are truly grateful for each gift received. Prayer. Please pray for my brother's family. Mark battled cancer for the last several months but the Lord finally took him on February 4th. I had the privilege of leading him to Christ and baptizing him many years ago, but I was thankful to have the opportunity to have a long talk to him in January, reaffirming with him his faith in Jesus alone for his salvation. It's always hard to say goodbye, but looking forward to our heavenly reunion. Praise the Lord. Please pray too for Angie. She's been having a few digestive issues over the last year and finally went to see the doctor. They think it may be her gallbladder, so she's having some further tests next week. Angie's asking the Lord for clear answers and an easy solution without surgery if possible. Praise. Religious education classes started back up again with the beginning of the new school year. The lessons this term will cover the parables of Jesus and conclude with his death, burial, and resurrection. In the first class, we were discussing the meaning of being born again in several, grades five and six, children, without prompting, bowed their heads and asked Jesus to save them, and then told the rest of the class. It, it was a very encouraging start to the year, and we praise God for the working of his spirit in the hearts of the children. Something new. Some of you know that Angie loves to write and to, and to teach. She is combining these two gifts and has begun a Substack newsletter called Simply Angie. We invite you to subscribe and have the address here. She's got lots of wisdom to share as well as plans for upcoming projects she has in the works. I think it will be a blessing to you. We have also decided to move our digital prayer letter to Substack to make it easier to communicate with you and have everything all in one place. If you're already on our email list, we'll automatically be transferred over, but if not, you can subscribe. I think you're going to like this new setup as it will allow us to shoot off short video clips, photos, and updates more frequently without the formality of writing and mailing a more formal prayer letter. It will also make it easier for you to comment and chat back to us there. Thank you for your understanding and patience as we work out any technical difficulties in this transfer process. Your fellow servants, Don and Angie, and let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for the Berg family and their many years of service. I pray for Don as he's lost his brother. Uh, I imagine that there's sorrow and there's also joy there as he is in heaven. I pray that you'd uh, bless Angie, help her with these uh, digestive problems, help them to be effective in the work. And we pray for the service tonight that you'll bless in a special way. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's exciting. I heard about in Australia that uh, they actually have religious classes in the public schools and uh, they have a unique opportunity to, to actually teach the gospel in the public schools, which is 
What a blessing that is, and they're taking advantage of it. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. And we'll begin with verse, verse 6. We'll be doing the second part of the lesson on resourcefulness, learning some lessons from this character quality, Genesis chapter 26 and verse 6. It says, And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say, She is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. Heavenly Father, praise and thank you, Lord, for the chance to read your word and be able to propagate the messages from your word. I pray that you please teach us something. Teach us something, Lord, that we can implement in our lives and we can be aware of and we can take advantage of. I pray that you please help us to understand this principle and apply it to our lives and be more like you because of it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here in the scriptures, we find that, that Isaac, uh, Rebecca, was obviously not his half-sister and not his wife or, or not his half-sister, um, but like um, Abraham, had, Abraham had said about Sarai in two different occasions, she is my sister, it was a half-truth because Sarai was Abraham's wife and was his half-sister. But here in this case, Rebecca wasn't, and so he just flat out uh, just told a lie. And, and uh, we're looking at the different things that... Uh, that uh, we about resourcefulness. The the definition of resourcefulness is wise use of that which others would normally overlook or discard, and how that uh, we ought to use the resources that we've been given. One of the resources that Isaac had been given had been a good name and a good testimony, and 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 uh, you know, good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And uh, to, to undermine that because you're not being truthful, it only hurts oneself. So before we get into the lesson, let's get into, let's uh, look at the first page. Let's say the definition of the, of the quality and then the verse uh, down at the bottom, Psalm 16.6. We'll say those a few times, kind of get our minds back in, in gear regarding this. All right, so let's say that together. Ready? Here we go. Resourcefulness. Wise use of that which others would normally overlook or discard, Psalm 16.6. 16, 6. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. Again, resourcefulness. Wise use of that which others would normally overlook or discard, Psalm 16, 6. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. One more time. Resourcefulness. Wise use of that which others would normally overlook or discard, Psalm 16, 6, the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. Last week we talked about how Isaac, he had a good heritage. He had, a, he had an obedient spirit. He obeyed his father Abraham. He was the child of, of promise that, that God had promised Abraham. I wonder how many times Abraham told uh, Isaac that story of how he waited for 25 years for this child of promise. He had, he had an obedient spirit. That obedient spirit was, very, it was so much of a blessing to, to Isaac. Uh, God tested his father, Abraham, one time and asked him to sacrifice his son. And Isaac, he just put his hand, he put his life right into his father's hands. And because of that, uh, that willingness and that total trust that he had in his father, God really richly blessed him. His inheritance, uh, um, Isaac in inherited great uh, sums of money, uh, relationships, and all, most importantly, wise counsel because, uh, because of his, his, his heart and his, uh, his obedience and that faithfulness. And so God gave him a wife. Uh, God taught uh, him through how his father got him a wife. Uh, by going uh, to, to a place uh, away from the Canaanites of the land uh, and got him a wife from uh, his, his family line versus the people, the pagan people who were in the area. But as, as time went on, it seems like Isaac, he forgot some of those things. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that is very important for for those who are raised in the Christian circles, who are raised like children, raised in 
Christianity is, is like Abraham. He was raised in paganism. He was raised in Ur of the Chaldees. And so he knew what the, the effects of that, what it did for your spirit and what it did for your heart and, uh, and how empty that life was. But whenever you're raised in Christianity, as Isaac was, um, you know, Abraham had been saved, we could say, for 25 years. He had been, so he was a very mature Christian by years standpoint. Isaac, he was raised with all of this teaching. And so he wasn't raised in Ur of the Chaldees. He didn't have the baggage of, uh, of the sinful life. And so uh, the, the one thing that, that, is, that is really a temptation for those raised in Christianity is to not realize how damaging and how hurtful the world is and sin is. And it's hard, it's hard to just take somebody's word for it when you have no experience. You have not felt how empty life without Christ is. And uh, it's, it, it's just something that, that I believe every Christian young person needs to get along with God and ask God to help their heart understand just the, the warnings that they're being given, the, 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 the cautions that they're being given. If, uh, I mean, many, many Christians, many solid, great Christians who got saved say, later in life, they look at Christian young people who are raised in Christianity and their moms and dads brought them to church and in their hearts they wish they wish they had that. Because they, they, they remember all that time, all those years of emptiness, all that years of aching in their heart, searching for something that they didn't know what. And then Christ came. And it was like you were being saved out of a desert. But that Christian young person has never experienced that desert. So it's something that God has to do. God has to do that work in a person's heart. Isaac, he was raised drinking from the water of life. And so it's very easy for a, a Christian young person to, to dismiss things that are normal to them, but are really instituted in their life as part of that good heritage as part of their protection so that they don't have to feel the pains of what's going on outside of life, life with Christ. So Isaac, we see that he had a good relationship, but sadly he, he, he overlooks his, his good heritage. He overlooks that heritage that God had given him. Uh, we, we, we thought about Isaac and his wife. They waited 20 years or they prayed 20 years for, for children and finally God gave them twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau, he was a man of uh, the field, a hunter, and he went after the women of, of Canaan, of the land. Well, Jacob, his, his mom said, Isaac, if Jacob marries somebody from around here like Esau did, you know, Esau's wives, they're a grief to our heart. And if Jacob does the same thing, what is my life? Why did I come all the way, 500 miles away from my home to come be your wife for all these years? Why did I come? And then both of my boys, they just go to the world. She said, send Jacob back home. So that's what he did. But Isaac, had he been looking at his, at his heritage, he would have considered the fact that, you know what? Hey, Esau and Jacob, they are getting up in years. What did my dad do? How did my dad find me a wife? He sent somebody to go find one. And God, God brought us together. If you, if you think about in the beginning, in the beginning, Adam, after all of creation... God looks at Adam and says, it's not good for a man to be alone. And then what did God create? Did you ever notice that in Genesis 2? All the beasts of the field. Look at the scriptures. It makes me wonder if God, God was trying to figure out what was Adam going to be satisfied? Would he, would he be satisfied with a dog? They say it's man's best friend. Was he going to be satisfied with a dog? Or what about a horse? Guys love horses. It was, a, it was a one that was just like him. It was one that was just like him. And what, did, what God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. He took a rib from him. He created Eve and he brought Eve unto Adam, the Bible says. That's exactly how Isaac got married. God brought Rebekah unto Isaac. 
but with his own children, sadly, it appears that he forgot and didn't take advantage of that goodly heritage. Let's look at the back of the lesson and what are some resources that are available to you? I've got some blanks here. The first one that I can think of is truthfulness. Truthfulness is a resource. We know the definition of truthfulness from our character studies, earning future trust by accurately reporting past facts. Truthfulness is, is always the best way to do business. Truthfulness. It, it, when, you, when that temptation to lie comes in our heart, We've got to rebuke the devil and say, get out of here, because I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want the consequences. Because of all people that it will be found out, it will be me. And I don't want to deal with that. Even with our relationships with our spouses, is, is to always be truthful, always be open, always be honest. Never, never be, be living a life where, where we're hiding stuff. You know, my, my, my wife, at any point, she could pick up my phone and she could, her fingerprints are in the phone or she has the access code to get in my phone, and vice versa. That, that, that has become, a, 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 for many, I've heard many a Christian couple, that has become a, a, an area of hiding. Why? Why would you want to hide from your best friend? Why would, I, I, don't, I don't get that. The treasure that God has given you, I don't get that. Being truthful. That's a resource. That's a very powerful resource. You're earning future trust by stating the past facts in a truthful way. What's another resource that you have? You have relationships. You have relationships. You have relationships. Relationships are worth so much more than money. Relationships are worth so much more than independence. I, I, I love when, when Brother Tony says, hey, I'm going to go spend a day with my dad. Good. Good. You know how many times, you know, you know what I would give to be able to spend, spend one day with my dad? My heart aches. I still miss him. It's been 38 years. And I'm glad. I'm glad when I see that you want to spend time with your dad or with your family. You want to, you want to nurture that relationship because you don't know how long you have. My grandma, Riley, she passed away the week that Josiah was born. Their lives overlapped by three days. They were able to be touched. They were able to touch each other. She was on her deathbed whenever we brought, her, brought him over and, and, and presented. That relationship is, is just so sweet, those relationships. God has given us those relationships for a very special purpose. What is, what is another resource? A godly heritage. A godly heritage. If you, have, if you are a second generation Christian and you have a, 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 those who are in the previous generation who were Christians before you, that is, that is, a, that is a heritage. That is a, they, helped, they helped get you, get your life out of the pit of sin. I praise the Lord that I am a third generation. My, my grandpa, who got saved when he was in, in the Navy, and then raised my mom and her siblings, raised them in church. He was a pastor, and, and, and raised them in church. And then my mom, she wanted to, to raise her, her kids in church as well. And so I, 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 what a blessing that is. What a blessing that is. I know it was probably hard for my grandpa because he was having to split from the Methodist church and become a missionary Baptist. And, you know, Baptists and Methodists, boy, they just can't get along because Methodists, they, they're just going to do things a certain way. And, but uh, the Baptists, they, you know, they're, they're more strict with the book. But he said, this is the direction I want to, I want to take my family because he knew what it was like to be in a drunkard's home. He knew what it was like. That godly heritage is... Is priceless. You may say, well, I'm, I'm a first-generation Christian. Well, praise the Lord. You're a pioneer. You're a pioneer. Praise the Lord. We need those. We need those who, 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 who come out of Egypt and cross that Red Sea and say, you know, if I've got to spend my life in the wilderness just so that my children can have a chance at the victorious Christian life, I'll do it. I'll do it. That's a godly heritage. What's another resource that is available to us? A man of God. 
a man of God, a counselor, somebody who consults the scriptures, somebody, spiritual advisors who, who, who sincerely have a relationship with God in his word. And when you present a, 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 a situation, they can, they can think of other things or they can pray with you on certain things. That's a resource. That's a, such a resource. Here's another resource that is available to you. Wise counsel. Wise counsel. We have God's word, and we in God's word is, is 66 books of wise counsel. And it, it, it is a, it's, it, the person is a fool who does not consult that wise counsel, who tries to make these decisions on their own. Wise counsel. What's another resource that is available to us? A church. Being able to come to church. If you could just study the Old Testament and look at how many times the followers of Jehovah, how many times they congregated. From what I gather, it wasn't weekly like we do in the New Testament. It was sporadically, maybe every three months or People would probably come weekly. They would, they would space it out. But, but my understanding is it wasn't as regular as it was in the old, as, as it is in the New Testament. And I, and I, I can see that how that the, the Israelites, after so many years of, of this uh, routine of, of you, you imagine the, you know, the, the Muslims once a year going to Mecca, you know, once a year going to Jerusalem, having a conference once a year, is that spiritually really going to get you through the whole year? And are you really going to be able to spiritually be on fire for God and, and fervent for God by going to church one week out of a year for, for a one-week revival? I don't think so. Not in this world. And I think the Lord, he foresaw that. And he said, you know what? I think the, the, the folks in the New Testament, especially the Gentiles, I, I think they need, they need to have a family, a local family, not where they go to one place, but they have a local church spiritual family, and they're able to minister to their hearts. And I think that they would do more in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world if they had a place locally that they could congregate with other like-minded people. That's the church. That's the church. That's a blessing. That's a resource. And when, 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 when our, our, our spirit is not fervent towards building it up and doing all we can do to make it the best place ever, we're, we're not taking full advantage of that resource. Number two, valuable resources can be gained by maintaining the right relationships. What are some right relationships? The first one is God and child God and his child. Another right relationship is pastor and member. Pastor and member. Another right relationship is the parent and child. A parent and child. Another right relationship is peer and peer. Number three, tragic losses. Tragic losses occur when important relationships are broken for selfish purposes. Tragic losses occur when important relationships are broken for selfish purposes. Number four, what could break the pastor and member relationship? What could break up that pastor-member relationship? Rebellious church members. Rebellious church members. We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful that we always maintain a very humble spirit in our walk with God and never mentally or in our heart think that we've arrived. If we ever get to that point where we think that we have arrived, our, 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 our inner man, our heart will get puffed up. And when the man of God has got to say, hey, I'm a little concerned about X, Y, Z area, you'll notice that a person that's getting puffed up, they will become defensive and they will reject that 
and they will start pushing away that objectivity from their man of God. Eventually, if they don't correct that, they, that will turn into rebellion. They'll start resisting and rebelling against the man of God. And that's very dangerous. Very dangerous. But that could break a pastor-member relationship, having rebellion in your heart. Number five, what could break the parent and child relationship? What could break the parent and child relationship? Many times I've seen it, girlfriend or boyfriend. Girlfriend or boyfriend, I know that a lot of this won't apply to you, but maybe this is good counsel that you can give to your kids and grandkids and just help them to understand that the, the, the parent-child relationship, God honors the parent-child relationship. He looks at the parent as being the umbrella of protection over the child. And when, that, when, that, when there's a person, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, that tries to pull, them, pull that child out from underneath the umbrella of authority and usurp the authority that God has placed over that, that young person's life, that young person is in risk of being in danger. So a girlfriend or boyfriend, that includes having a crush in secret on someone too. Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 13. Having a crush in secret, do it, doing it behind. If it's so right, then why isn't it out in the open? Why, why be secretive about it? Proverbs 13, 20. It says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Having a secret relationship with someone that you shouldn't be having is being a companion of a fool. If, if it's so right, then it ought to be wide out in the open. What does Psalms 1, 1 say? It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. To continue number five, never get counsel from a fool about relationships that will involve the hearts of your entire family. That's great counsel for your kids and grandkids. Never get counsel from a fool. Who would be the fool? The fool would be somebody their own age who has no experience, doesn't understand the dynamics of heart relationships and the pain that can come when you, when you put bad combos of people together. You can really get a lot of pain and hurt, and it's unnecessary. Never get counsel from a fool about relationships that will involve the hearts of your entire family. When two people get married or when two people are interested, it's the families. It's the families that are uniting. Who are you going to spend holidays with? And how do you want that situation to be? Tentious? I don't want it. <laughs> That's not fun. You've heard about these families when they have, oh, brother, got to go to the in-laws for, well, it's going to be a World War III when we go to the in-laws. It doesn't have to be. It, had you picked their... Uh, <sighs> Never get counsel from a fool about relationships that will involve the hearts of your entire family. That conversation topic is super sacred. That conversation topic is super sacred and is to be discussed with only those who will be living with the results of that serious decision. I've told my kids many times, I am going to be so into your relationships because I do not want to adopt your children. Yeah, there you go. Amen. Unless you die. Okay? You get my point? I don't want to be, I, once I want, to, I want to go on a honeymoon with, with that woman, and I want to gallivant around the world with that woman once all the kids, once we're empty nesters, we're going to go travel in the world. <laughs> so marry the right one and stay married to her, and I don't want to adopt your kids and, and have your kids pawned off to me all the time because you're trying to hold down a house and all of this stuff because you didn't do follow wise counsel in the beginning. I know there's extenuating circumstances, and I, and I get that. Things happen. But we can try to use wisdom and try to avoid that as much as possible. So, where were we? Uh, to, to, okay. Um, that conversation topic is super sacred and is to be discussed with, with only those who will be living with the result of that serious decision. That's why I don't like these, these, uh, these movies that, that uh, constantly 
are sticky, syrupy, romancy, and stuff like that. And and yeah, trying to encourage teenage relationships and things. It's just like you're you you can't even shave, man. Come on, you're shaving with tweezers, and you're worried about a woman. Come on, come on, really. All right. Men, do you ha raise your hand if you have respect for a young man who has never even shaved. Meaning, in the grand scheme of life, do you really look at him with respect? Raise your hand. No, okay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. To speak of such things without their parents' permission to do so is a total lack of respect for their parents. It's a total lack of respect. It's usurping the parents' authority. It's, it's undermining the good heritage that that young, that young person has been given. Number six, turning your Bibles to Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Number six, what should break the peer-to-peer -peer relationships? What should break the peer-to-peer -peer relationships? Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? What should break the peer-to-peer -peer relationship? The walk with God. The walk with God. You should be able to, because, you're, because bird, the, there's so much truth in that phrase, birds of a feather flock together. Pastor Gray down in Texas, he's, he, he would preach a lot of youth meetings. And he's, he said he would go to many, many national conferences or big conferences. And, and he said it would always amaze him how this church from, from the North Pole would bring their children, their teenagers to the conference. And this church over here from the South Pole would bring their church and their teens to the conference. That's just the two extremes, okay? Two random places. And inevitably, within a few days, teens from North Pole Church, North Pole Baptist Church, and South Pole Baptist Church, teens they, they, of, 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 of similar heart would connect and meet and become lifelong friends, and there were bad combinations for each other. It's like, how did they find each other? It's the spirit. It's the spirit. Those spirits attract. What should break a peer-to-peer -peer relationship? It should be the walk with God. When a, young, when, a, when a person is walking with God, you're going to be able to, to detect that other spirit, that this other person really loves the Lord. And you're going to feel open and free. The more you get to know that person, you're going to feel more open and free to share Scripture with them because your heart is there and their heart is there and you're guided by the same spirit. Number seven, thank you for your patience. What could break the God and child relationship? Go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and verse 11. What could break the God and child relationship? Psalms 119, 111, or verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But what could break the God and child relationship? Distractions. Sin. getting our eyes off the Lord. Those relationships are, are immense resources. They help us get through this old, nasty world, this pigsty of a world that we've got to go through. God gave us those relationships for a reason. And if, we're in a, if a wise person, a wise person would take advantage of those things and not... Just throw them away or disregard them. Again, what's the definition of resourcefulness? Wise use of that which others would normally overlook or discard. God, he's given us so many good resources. And we would be wise to use them. And we would be wise to understand them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. Thank you so much. For your word, please help us, Lord, to take advantage of these, these resources that you've given us. Lord, please help us to tuck these things away. Help us to teach others and help others. Help others to see all the things, the blessings that you've given us. And if we will use them wisely, we will end up 
in a very good place at the end of our lives. We will be able to look back and see the godly heritage that, that we've been able to, to create and pass down to our children and our grandchildren and even our great-grandchildren. But, oh Lord, it all depends on what we do, the decision we make about the resources that you've given us. First of all, recognizing them. And second, utilizing them. Please, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Come here, Ms. Let's play hymn of invitation. The altar is open. Let's pray. Our blue song we can go to number 316 we'll sing the first and last verse of i have decided to follow jesus number 316 number 316 i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back and as the second verse says though none go with me still i will follow we need to let it enter into our minds what life would be like if we were to lose all for jesus christ We need, to, we need to entertain and, and try to mentally put ourselves there. What if I were to lose all for Jesus Christ? Or, or if I were to be put in that position? I, something that helps is to, to read 
uh, testimonies of people who, like the, the, the Trail of Blood, the, the Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, Voice of Martyrs magazine, I mean, present day persecutions. And realize we have a, we have the resources of, of God and His promises, and, and we've got to take advantage of them. We've got to take advantage of them. Amen. Amen. Well, let's bow for prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Um, Brother Tony, do you mind praying for us?